Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yahad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Able and On Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Coming up on this edition of, of Ableton On Air, we focus on parent advocate and special needs advocate Alice Goltz of Montpelier, Vermont. All that and much more with her past, present, and future, but we focus on the future and what she's doing now. All that and much more when Ableton On Air starts right now. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. Our needs not here today. On this particular program, Today we focus on Alice Goltz, parent advocate and special needs advocate for people with special needs, and we focus on her abilities despite her disabilities. Um, we would like to welcome Alice Goltz, uh, but before we do that, we would like to say special thanks to our partners, uh, Higher Ability Vermont, um, the Association for the Blind Vermont, and the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont. Thank you for uh, joining us, Alice, on Able and On Air. Thank you. Okay. Try to speak as loud as possible, okay? Um, okay. So take me back, um, for those that don't know, I, I know that Al Jazeera uh, doesn't exist anymore, Al Jazeera um, Media, but take me back uh, what happened in 2007. In, in 2007, I, um, I had a baby girl, mm -hmm. and the next, after I had, a, I had my baby girl, two men came into my hospital room and stated that DCF was going to take my child, and I didn't get no notification, it was just, just a pay not even a paper to who was making these claims. So they, the dis, dis, DCF stands for disability, the, the Division for Children and Families of Vermont, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and then go from there. What, what um, happened, if, you know, I mean, you can shorten this part, but what exactly happened... Uh, uh, in that hospital room, did they, they just sign papers and took your kid, your child away, or what exactly happened? They had my do my daughter. I was seven, I had to have a nurse in the room when they brought my daughter to me. Mm -hmm. Go so ahead. my daughter was in one in one room, and I was in another room. Mm -hmm. So and and then. And then you were all 
you were all distraught and upset and all of that, right? I mean, yes. I mean, was there any reason behind it, or they just um, thought you weren't going to be a good parent? Um, any reason? D DCF has been um has been in, been in my life for for quite some time. No, no. What I mean, so let me repeat the question. Let me repeat the question. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. So I'll repeat this, it. This is how it leads up to DCF. Okay, go ahead. So um, in two in 2006, I had a I had left my my husband, mm -hmm. and I I had a I had a breakdown. Mm -hmm. My husband's um, SSI money was being affected. Mm -hmm. So when I came back up to the state, mm -hmm. we went to the PATH office because I, somebody in New York helped my brother to put a special needy trust fund together that wouldn't affect his disability. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we went back to, to PATH, which is now called Economics, and we told him about the fund, the special needy trust fund, that would not affect the, dis the disability. Well, they um, they gave us a hard time. Mm -hmm. I tried to get help from the from the law project in Burlington, mm -hmm. and um, then when I came back, the next thing I know is that my ex husband he had a nervous breakdown, and they took away his dog, mm -hmm. and I had to fight for that. Mm -hmm. So. So, okay. Like DCF has been in my life for, for quite some time. Okay. So okay. moving moving forward, uh, by the way, um, there's a story about Alice. For those that want to know more about her, there's a story about Alice on www.disabledparenting.com forward slash author Alice Goltz. Um, and basically, it's saying. And the story goes on. If you want to find out more, you click on the website. My name is Alice Goltz, and, and April 13, 2007, I had a baby girl. The next day, two men came into my hospital room stating that they were from the Vermont Department of Children and Families, and they were taking custody of my daughter. Um, the state of Vermont had already made up their minds. Um, and then... The, and then and then you're continuing the story, but the the point being for this that we want to say to uh, people who are in the state of Vermont is that despite your disability, you still can be a good parent. So what is some what's some advice that um, and as your daughter gets older, she has to make the decision. But what 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 is some advice that you can give? other parents that are going through the same thing um, that you might be? Um, excuse me. Go ahead. Keep, fight, keep fighting. Mm -hmm. And, um, and keep, keep talking to people. Okay. Keep going. You're doing good. Keep, um... Take your time. Just keep, just keep, keep fighting. Keep fighting the good fight. <laughs> okay, um, but you're also an advocate. Um, you've you've also um, r ran for city council. You want to t tell us a little bit about that and what you did with that, even though you, uh, even though you lost. Um, yes, I ran for city council two two times. Mm -hmm. Um, I had I had gotten a, a the Teresa Wood Award at um, Voices and Choices this year, mm -hmm. and um, and it talks about a lot of different things. It talks about one that I'm a stunt advocate for parents with disabilities. As a matter of fact, I'm working with my legislator here in Vermont, Connor Casey, mm -hmm. to get H. Eight, the bill is eight six hundred to protect parents' rights. I also okay, repeat um, that. Well, hold on. Slow and, down. And slow. Advocate together, and then about running for city council. I did. I 
I did run up the city council twice, and I took a big risk at advocating for the people. But what exact? What so? What is the? What is you said? Bill eight hundred. What is that? No, it's it's, it's Bill eight six hundred. Okay, Bill H six hundred six hundred. Yes, it didn't get it didn't go through. So now we have to bring relating. Down. Okay, hold Next. on, hold on, slow down, please. Um, so Bill status eight uh h six hundred specifically states here um has to do with people with disabilities correct yes okay so why didn't why didn't it not go through it didn't go through because we never it never got into to a certain committee oh okay you said, yeah, um, it, well, it went to the House, and then the first time referred to the Committee of Judiciary. So, um, but what exactly is Bill H-600? Can you explain a little bit more about that? Bill H-600 is to protect parents' rights from pa parents with disabilities getting their rights taken away. Mm-hmm. So, what, according to a past interview I did with um, Susan Nuon, uh, what, um, what makes people with disabilities good parents? What makes parents? I'll repeat it again. In order for children not to be taken away, by state or local authorities or, or um, you know, federal or state authorities. What makes, uh, why would people with disabilities be, uh, why should people with disabilities be good parents? Or why do you think they should be considered to be good parents? Do you understand and, the question? I consider I consider people with disabilities can be good parents. But you can't you can't just just say because they, they have a disability they can't be they can't be a good parent. I feel that people everybody deserves. That's my wife. Three, two, one. I'll repeat the question again, uh, Alice. All right. Why do you think people with disabilities should be considered good parents? I think everybody deserves a fair chance, regardless if they have a disability or not. Mm hmm And according to Susan Nguyen and, and other advocates in um, in the field of disabilities, um, do you think people with disabilities should receive, or people with special needs should re should receive more training when it comes to raising kids? You're more training, more education. More education and more training, yes. Yes. Okay, why? Because it, it takes it may take them longer than than somebody that doesn't have a disability. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to raising kids. Uh, and by the way, just for um, just so <clears throat> just so you know. Um, it takes a lot to raise kids, but in terms of the way the government helps people with children, um, certain states, uh, let, me, let me look it up, certain states give incentives and, um, for example, if you're on Medicaid, um, there, according to the state of Vermont, uh, Vermont Health Access and Medicaid, if you need incontinence supplies such as adult diapers or diapers for your um, for your child, uh, disposable supplies that Medicaid can pay for uh, through it's called um, all medically all medically incontinence products 
for Vermont Medicaid members will be supplied through a single vendor, um, active style, or adaptive health company. This, um, this will stop barriers to access of diapers, pull, off, pull and pull off briefs, under pad uh, situations like Chuck's. See, it, it's a, the blue pad that goes under somebody if, if, they're, if they're going to the bathroom. Underwear shield or shield liners. Incontinence products can also be um, paid for by Medicaid. It's called durable medical equipment. Uh, you can go to the durable medical equipment website by visiting um, DVHA, durable medical equipment, webpage. Or, and then you can fill out a new order form by, uh, by clicking new order form, cmactivestyle.com. Um, you can go to this website. It's dvha.vermont.gov, uh, www.dvha.vermont.gov. Or for more information, you can call one 888 -614 -4635. That number is one 614 And they're open from Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, Central Time. If you're on the Central um, Time Zone or, you know, the Green Mountain Care. Also, the Green Mountain Care customer service is 800-250-8427. That's 250-8427. 8427 if you need any further information on disposable garments like diapers. But, um, yeah, um, people with disabilities can be good parents, uh, and um, we just have to keep on um, really trying to, you know, speak speak to our legislature about, about that, you know, um, for example, just because I'm I'm visually impaired doesn't mean I'll be a bad parent, you know. Um, and I'm sure there's other people in my case as well. Is there anything you want to say with that about being a good parent and and moving forward, Alice? Um. No, I I I just don't think that, I think that parents can be good parents. A matter of fact. Um, I was having an interview here in Mount Pillar on the 30th, mm -hmm. that, that last Thursday, mm -hmm. and then there was, there, was also, um, there was also an article where DCF was, was um, somebody else is here in Mount Pillar was interviewed by WCAX and regarding to the same, the same situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there are other uh, other situations like yours. Um, so moving forward to this, um, uh, since you're an advocate, now what exactly was that award that you received? It was the Teresa Wood Award. It was a it was a high award for advocacy, and I got it throughout. I was um, I got it throughout the state of Vermont. And my best friend, Alan, presented it to me. Okay, so Teresa Wood Award. Let me look it up. Um, act, so Teresa Wood was a representative. Um, uh, here it is. And what exactly this award um, is meant for. Teresa Wood wo grew up in Woodbury and attended... Champlain College, um, she worked for the state legislature, and uh, an award is uh, named for her, um, you know, in terms, uh, in terms of people with disabilities and advocacy. Um, so, yeah, and um, the award is given yearly to a person with a disability that embodies qualities. Um, Teresa was the executive director of the national corporation that contracted with the state to help Medicaid recipients manage their chronic conditions. Tropical storm Irene brought devastation to her hometown 
and this is why this award um, does exist. And uh, it's yeah, Teresa Wood. Uh, she represented um, Washington and Chittenden County, uh, and this is why the um, award is in her name. Um, but g going forward, Alice, what is some other advice you can give advocates who are in your same um, situation? Just keep speaking to your legislators. There is somebody here in Vermont that the governor had appointed protect Pete, to protect the parents. His name is Michael Bernstein. Uh -huh. And keep talking, even if you have to go on the news. Because like I said, um, what, the name of the story that um, the other interview that was on WCAX on last Thursday mm -hmm. was, call, was called New Law Aimed to Redeem Failure in Vermont Child Protection. Hold on, let me look it up. Protection. And that was WCAX. W C A X. Okay, yeah. New law aims to remedy failures in in child protection. So let me be just to the people who, um, yeah, May thirtieth. Um, a Vermont woman who you, you can dream a, a you Vermont can dream woman. Do you want an unforgettable hold on, hold on. Let me get employees, client. Let me let me get to that again. Sorry. Uh, um, one minute. Let me uh, let me look at let me look that up. WCAX. Cause the new law. Child protection. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Here we go. So. According, uh, a Vermont woman says that she was wrongfully taken. Did you get interviewed or was it somebody else? No, I didn't get interviewed by, by that person. Okay. But I was, that was the same day that J.D. interviewed me. J.D. Green interviewed okay. me. Okay. So Vermont woman says she was wrongfully taken a child. They wrongfully took her child um, by state social social workers and speaking out against problems with at the agency, including decades-old computer system, staff shortages, and lies. The long-running issues are part of a sweeping overhaul bill before Governor Phil Scott. Mercedes King was just a child when her father got so drunk that he pushed her into a broken laundry basket at the trailer and they lived in uh, in Northboro. King's mother, um, Sarah LeBray, tried, <clears throat> tried to take custody of her children and says that a DCF caseworker thought that her relationship with her father made her incapable and refused. And um, the story goes on to say that um, there are problems with the system. Over the past few years, more stories like King's come to light. A report by the Vermont Parent Representation Center shocked Bill Young, the former commissioner of social rehabilitation services, now called DCF, out of retirement uh, after just two months. And, um, and he said that it's true that the system, uh, the system needs work. Um, but it also goes on to say that um, uh, these days, the King uh, is in Montpelier advocating for children. She credits the reunification of her mother and her new DCFK um, DCF case workers, and she can't um, she can't just be dedicated. It can't just be dedicated workers holding the state system together. Uh, there has to be other advocates um, and individual people. Um, yeah, I mean, the system, basically, Alice, is falling apart. Uh, the medical system, 
uh, is falling apart, you know, with home health aids and uh, other things like that. And as advocates, we have to become more. We have to become more stronger when it comes to this. Um, um, you know, you can't let things like this sit idly by. What I mean by that is that uh, we just have to advocate and um, help one another. You know, um, yes. you can't just um, wait for things to happen um, because like I, you know like it says here lack of staff lack of manpower lack of money it all falls into place when it comes to that so but, um, I want to say something about that because um, in my case DCF was offered a $5,000 grant mm -hmm. if me and my daughter would have went to this program so they they're like they're saying in one hand that they're short of funding, but they're also the grant, and then they one DCF is willing to take the, take the case that was in Brattleboro, but at the Burlington, they had waited a day right before court to go down there, and there was no spot. So they were offered actually money to get us in the program, so they roadblocked it. Mm. So it's not it's not basically because So what you are money. you saying there's a lie there somewhere? Yes. Cuz this is exactly what WCAX is saying that um and other news stations are saying that people, you know, agencies do lie. And we 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 have to like I said, as advocates, we have to stand we can't just stand by and and um, let things happen. And according to WCAX, uh, it says uh, Bill H six six one also proposes a lengthier means of consideration of whether a parent's name should be added to the child protection registry. The bill is awaiting the governor's approval. So explain that a little bit. I don't really know too much about H, that, that bill you said, H6. What's Let me look it up. Bill H661. I don't really know about um, that bill H61, so I can't really, I can't really tell people about it because I, that, that was the first I ever heard of it was when this interview had came out. Okay, so Bill H six six one is done by by uh, Representative uh, Gabriel Steppens and Representative Tiffany Blumiel B L B L U E M L E, um, and their additional sponsors, Representative Catherine Stone, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Mary Catherine Stone. So basically, this, uh, let me look down here. It's a child protection. Uh, oh, yeah. An act relating to child abuse and neglect investigation and sub substantiation standards and procedure. Um, and they want to put this bill, and, you know, what they're saying is, I'm... Um, I mean, they're not saying that people with disabilities are abusive, but in in abusive situations that people with disabilities might be in, this is probably what they're trying to protect. You know, so yeah, um, they're trying to um, they're trying to do that so people with disabilities and small kids are not abused uh, by, I guess, relatives or or something something like that. Um, so again, um, yeah, the system is at fault here, and the biggest the biggest thing is that you know people with disabilities have to be very very strong advocates. Uh, you know when it comes to mental health, when it comes to physical health, when it comes to uh, um, I'll give you an example with me, even though um, I don't have we don't have children. 
I had, even though I knew my wife was in good hands at the hospital when it came to her diabetic amputation, you still have to be on top of surgeons. You have to be th there every day. Well, not every, you know, but you get my point. You have to yeah. you have to stay on top of your medical health, and you have to stay on top of making sure that everything is going to be okay. Because um, yes, sometimes advocates have to yell and scream or get the point across, but they they have a and they, and they have an old saying. People do better with applesauce than vinegar. Or, or I, I should say, people do better with honey than vinegar, okay? So as an advocate, we, as advocates, we, we need to, you know, talk to doctors. We need to talk to clinicians. We need to talk to people and, and, and make sure that, you know, um, Things like this don't have, you know, like your situation, we have to make sure and, and get that bill passed. We have to make sure that things like this don't happen again because, um, you know, people with disabilities can be excellent parents. And this is the point. Uh, um, you, know, the, you know, staff retire, uh, old file cabinets need to be updated you know, uh, so, you know, not to be closed. And it's just uh, absolutely, I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to say one thing. There's a, a gentleman, um, and I know it's a different situation, but, um, av but crime advocate John, um, John Walsh, who did, who did, who does that program America's Most Wanted, um, for years, uh, him and his wife, Reve, had to advocate to make sure that um, uh, the gentleman that killed, that murdered his son, Adam Walsh, uh, the, you know, um, the case went unsolved for years. They didn't know, they didn't know who, uh, who, who murdered his son. And come to find out that the gentleman that murdered his son passed away in prison, Otis Tool. But it took years and years and years and years for that to happen, for for that for that to for that file to be closed, you know, officially closed. And he became a parent advocate because of it. They did a movie based on his on on the family's life. My point is. Why do files have to be old and, uh, they call it old and stagnant, old and moldy? Well, um, files don't have to be old and moldy uh, or, or, you know, things should be taken care of the right way before people have to wait so long. That's my point. This is why we all have to advocate to make sure that things like this don't happen anymore. But is there anything else that you want to say in terms of um, being a good advocate and a good parent? No, I just feel like that. Just keep fighting. Just keep talking. Yeah, talking, uh, talking to social workers, talking to people that that um, that we need uh, we need to talk to, and um, um, and make sure that things like this don't happen again. I mean. They're going to constantly happen if we don't stay on top of things. Um, correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, do you want to, um, we have about 12 minutes left. Do you want to talk about a little bit about more about your advocacy in Washington County? Um, you can, but, if you want. Well, I just, I, matter of fact, I advocate. I even um, <laughs> green out some. South Advocacy, they had me advocate for, I was at the State House mm. for the um, Vermont, Vermont Workers Center advocating for the um, for medical and poor people because I feel like we're also left out. Why do we, why do you feel that people with disabilities are left out? I feel that, no, I feel that not just disabilities, but the but the poor are like left out. Like I feel that we need more assistance here in Vermont for help. 
but I feel like they don't. We're not do you think? Do you think people? Hurt. So okay. Do you think people? I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you this question. Do you think people with disabilities are getting less services, or do you, or should they have more services? I think that some of them are getting less services. Why? Not enough. They're saying not enough staff, not enough funding. Mhm. Mm okay. Uh, uh, what is one way do you think that, that that we can get more services? You understand the question? Yes, I'm just thinking about it. Go ahead. Take it. Um, j just keep talking. Even you have to go up, go up the ladder, and talk to somebody higher, and um, in these um agencies. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I would like to thank you um, for joining me today on this edition of Able Den On Air. Um, for more information on Alice's story, you can go to www.disabilityparentingproject.com. Um, Disability Parenting Project forward slash um, author Alice Goltz. And for more information on Able Den On Air, you can go to www.orcamedia.net. <clears throat> uh, that's www.orcamedia.net forward slash abled and on air, and then it'll take you straight to the show. Um, Alice, I would like to thank you. Uh, what is your future goals of being an advocate before we end? My future goal is to is to be able to help be able to help people, help more people. And also my future goal is is to see my daughter. Okay. Um, and I pray for more pa for parents to also be able to see their kids. Okay. Yeah, the, we, have to, we have to do something about this, about this old system. Cause yeah, well, the system is not going to fix itself. There needs to be more people like you and me to, to fix the system because if we advocate for better services for our families, then, then we're, you know, the point is you have to be on top. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to really quick, I'm going to look something up. Uh, there, there's a web, uh, um, there's a how to be, let me see, how to be... Hold on, let me just look something up before we end. Um, so there, there's, um, for those that want to learn how to become a, um, a, dis a better disability advocate, you can go, um, there's a really good um, website, actually. Um, uh, it's called the Chalai Foundation, C H E. C H A E L I Foundation, and uh, for more information on that, you can go to www.chalifoundation.org. And if you want to learn how to be a better disabilities advocate, um, they're they're an advocacy organization dealing with children and young adults. So uh, and so regardless of. Um, abilities. They're in New York. If you want more information on that, you can go to www.chaleifoundation.org, C-H-A-E-L-I Foundation, and um, you can also donate to them as well. Um, and, it, and they help with advocacy, and they help uh, uh, there's also YAI and many others, but you, you can check that online as well. Um, but, yeah, we have to be on top of these things, because if we're not, then um, we won't get work done. Anyway, Alice, I would like to thank you for joining us on this edition of Able Den On Air. Again, for more information on Able Den On Air, you can go to www.orcamedia.net. That's www.orcamedia.net. 
And thank you for having me. Thank you, Alice, and we'll talk soon. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And... Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx, Abel Air has been seen in the following publications, Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists.